Have you ever tried to set your own speedboat record? You've seen one of those crazy fast speed printing attempts and you were wondering how fast your printer could go. So you opened your slicer, cranked up every slider in the speed section and here we go, 13 minutes. What? So what kind of black magic did these people use to go sub 10 minutes? This and much more we will find out in this video. I'm Matt the printing nerd and in this video I want to share with you some slicer settings that will reduce the print time of your speedboats without increasing the acceleration or the speed of your printer. Additionally, these settings can also enhance the print speed of quality prints without affecting their overall quality. While there are various slicers available, I prefer to use Cura. It's the one I have the most experience with, however, most of the settings I will be discussing can be configured in other slicers as well, although the names may be slightly different. By default, Cura hides some of the more advanced settings to avoid overwhelming the user with too many options. To make the necessary changes for our specific needs, it's important to set the visibility settings for the slicer settings to all. This will reveal all the available options allowing us to fine tune the slicer to our desired needs. To start I use a profile that was already configured according to the speedboat race regulations. The profile includes a 0.5mm line width, 0.25mm layer height, two walls, 10% infill and three top and bottom layers. From there I doubled the infill layer thickness which allowed Cura to combine the infill layers for fast printing. After we sliced our Banshee, the estimated print time lies around 15 minutes. However, if you would print this G-code, it would take only around 12 minutes to print. So why the estimated print time is wrong and what could we do to improve it? Printing time estimation depends on many factors. Slicer manufacturers limit themselves to a handful of parameters that have the greatest influence on printing speeds in order to simplify the calculation on the printing time. To get a more precise evaluation of the printing time, we have to simulate the print. A good tool for this is Clipper Estimator from Annex Engineering. It uses an implementation of Clipper's kinematics to estimate the printing time. Pre-built binaries of the Clipper Estimator can be found on their GitHub release page, which can be accessed via the link provided in the video description. The developers of the tool have also provided a good documentation on the setup process, so I won't go into detail about that in this video. Once we have imported the clipper configuration from our printer, we are ready to simulate the print. To do this, simply start the estimator with the estimate parameter, followed by the path to the slice g-code you wish to simulate. After a few seconds, a report will appear that provides valuable information about the print. In this video we will focus on minimal time. Based on the generated report, it's clear that the actual print time for our Benchy was 12 minutes and 27 seconds. To ensure more accurate time estimates going forward, we will use Clipper Estimator instead of Cura for all further tests. Using 12 minutes and 27 seconds as our baseline, let's make our first adjustment to the Benchy model by rotating it 45 degrees and re-estimating the printing time using the estimator. The new estimated print time is 12 minutes and 20 seconds, which is 7 seconds faster than our original estimate. Why do you think the estimated print time has decreased? I leave this question unanswered for now and come back to it later in the video. Taking a closer look at the generated report reveals that a significant portion of the print time is allocated to retraction. For those who are new to 3D printing, it's essential to understand what retraction means and how it impacts the print time and quality. During 3D printing, the print head moves from one point to another and the heat of the nozzle combined with the pressure in the hot end can cause excess filament to be forced out, resulting in a form of overextrusion. This overextrusion leaves strings along the print head's path between the points, which can be frustrating to deal with. However, this problem can be eliminated through the use of retraction. Retraction is a feature designed to eliminate stringing by retracting the filament when the print head moves to a new location. During printing, filament is pushed forward, but during retraction, it sucked back, counteracting the hot end's pressure, preventing excess material from flowing when it's not supposed to. This helps to eliminate issues such as stringing, blobs, and other extruder-related print quality problems. 
When it comes to printing a banshee as fast as possible, retraction can be a major bottleneck. The retraction speed of a normal extruder is typically around 50 to 60 mm per second. And even a BMG extruder with a 3 to 1 gear ratio can only reach speeds of about 90 to 150 mm per second. These speeds are much lower than the normal print speeds for speedboats. As a result, when the printer is trying to retract the filament, it will reduce the movement speed of the print head to the retraction speed, causing a drop in speed from 400 to 600 mm to under 100 mm per second. To avoid speed drops, we choose to disable retraction for speedboats. While this will help to print faster, it will also lead to this typical looking stringing lines on the print. Also keep in mind, when using clipper, you have to disable pressure advanced, which is based on retraction and therefore has the same limitations. To improve our printing time even more, the next important parameter is minimum layer time. The minimum layer time determines the amount of time it should take to print one layer. When a layer would normally take less time to print than the set value, the printer will automatically slow down to ensure that the minimum layer time is reached. This is important as it allows the printed material to cool down properly before the printer begins printing the next layer. When it comes to printing a 3D banshee, we disable the slowdown by setting minimum layer time to zero. As a result, it's not uncommon to see a melted chimney on top of the boat. This is a compromise that we take since it's allowed by the speedboat rules and shaves down about two minutes of our print time. The next parameter I want to talk about are overhanging wall angle and overhanging wall speed. The overhanging wall angle defines the minimum wall angle that will be threaded as an overhanging wall and therefore printed with slower print speed defined by the overhanging wall speed. This technique is implemented to ensure better print quality and to avoid sagging, especially for printers with weak part cooling. For speedboard printing, we set the overhanging wall angle to 90 degree and the overhanging wall speed to 100% to ensure that the printer does not speed down on overhangs. Moving on in the experimental tab, there are two more settings that cause slower printing speeds, small features and bridging settings. By default, the settings are set to improve the quality of bridges and small features by reducing the print speed as they usually require tiny and intricate movements to prevent smushing or distortion. However, when focused on faster printing, we can disable these settings to increase the print speed. Uncheck Enable Bridge Settings and set the speed for small features to 100% to effectively disable these settings. You can also change the maximum hole size to zero. While this may not result in a significant time saving, it's still a worth optimization to consider, especially if you are trying to shave off every possible second of your print times. By default, most slicers have an acceleration limit for the models they generate. However, the 100 exceeds these limits as it is capable of printing at accelerations of 100,000 mm per second squared and even faster. This means that in order to fully utilize the capabilities of the printer, we need to disable acceleration control in the slicer so that acceleration is handled by the firmware. Let's have a look at the estimated print times. Wow! After making just 5 minor adjustments, we were able to slash the printing time for our speedboats in half. Yeah, that's progress, but we don't stop here. But before we go further, let's revisit the opening question. Why did the Banshee print faster when we rotated it by 45 degrees? As I answer this question, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel. By clicking the subscribe button and activating the bell, you'll stay updated on all our new content about speed printing, the 100 and more crazy projects we plan to do in the future. To achieve a desired print speed, a 3D printer has to accelerate. The following graphic shows the acceleration curve of a printed line. Approximately 15% of the printing time is spent on accelerating and another 15% is spent on decelerating. This means that the printer spends about 70% of its time printing at the speed that it has been set to. 
The Clipper estimator also illustrates this by comparing acceleration times, printing times and deceleration times. If you want to increase the printing time at maximum speed, we have two options. Option number one, increase acceleration. Option number two, increase the length of the line being printed. In the case of the Banshee rotated by 45 degrees, the second option comes into play. In Cura, when using lines infill, infill lines are always printed at a 45 degree angle regardless of the model's orientation. By rotating the Banshee by 45 degrees, we change the ratio between long and short infill lines in favor of higher speeds. Therefore, we can achieve a faster print time without needing to increase the printer's acceleration. While the Banshee is still printing, let's take a moment to compare the slicer profile we've created in this video with a speedboat profile of the 100. Currently, we've at the 6 minute and 3 seconds mark, which means we can potentially shave off another 20 seconds in a future video. If you have any ideas how to optimize our slicer profile even more, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss the second part of this speed printing series. Ah, and by the way, we rely entirely on our Patreon support to cover the material cost for the parts used in the builds you see in our videos making this project 100% open source. If you like our videos and you want to support us, become a Patreon. Another way to support us is to like this video and to leave a comment. This will increase our visibility on the YouTube's algorithm and help more people discover our content. Before we end this video, I want to give a big shout out to IRM31 for his incredible build of the 100. As far as I know, it's the fastest community build printer by now. With speeds up to 600 mm and accelerations of 100,000 mm per second squared, his printer is incredible fast. Let's see how long it takes until he will be able to transfer the speed onto a Banshee. We love seeing the innovative and exciting creations that members of our community produce and we are thrilled to share them with you. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date with our latest videos.